And the president was addressing the situation, saying uh, that they had been monitoring it, coordinating importantly with the allies, making sure they were all on the same page, that they did not give Putin any excuse to blame this on the West, blame this on NATO, because it is an internal matter. And I can acknowledge to you uh, that, just pulling the curtain back, uh, those of us who were making calls all day Saturday and Sunday, uh, were, it was very hard to pry any information, and none of it was on the record from any officials. It was all on what we would call deep background, not acknowledging even that a senior official had said this. They didn't want any American fingerprints on developments or in their assessments. So to, with that backdrop, which you know so well from the inside, uh, how good was our intelligence going into this as uh, Prigozhin was ramping up his criticism of Shogu and Gerasimov and the military? How prepared were we? for what happened? Well, I think as we've seen in the public sphere, uh, there was a fair amount of uh, activity and uh, rhetoric from Mr. Pogosin that heralded, I think, his uh, rather impulsive move over the weekend as he moved his forces toward Moscow. So I'm sure the intelligence community, uh, CIA and others, were looking very carefully at the intelligence to see what he, in fact, might be planning. And I'm pleased to, to see that the reporting indicates that the intelligence was provided to President Biden, the administration, so they could anticipate some of these twists and turns of developments over the weekend. And I must say, I think the Biden administration has handled the situation very well, made it very clear that this uh, situation is a matter of uh, internal Russian dynamics. Uh, we have had nothing to do with it. And they're not going to do or say anything that is going to be perceived as trying to influence events there. And so as this continues to unfold, I think the Biden administration is going to continue to try to stay as closely aligned with our allies and partners around the globe, watch the situation very carefully, be very concerned that there could, in fact, be further internal turmoil in Russia that could be destabilizing. And this is particularly worrisome, given that it has a strategic uh, nuclear weapons arsenal. Uh, well, the one thing they were willing to say on the record was that they were confident that the nuclear arsenal was secure, that command and control was being maintained, and they were maintaining communications. So what we don't have with the Chinese, military-to-military -military communications, in this whole crisis did continue, clearly, with Moscow, with the Kremlin. Uh, let's talk about Prigozhin, because he released an audio message today on Telegram and was not indicating exactly where he is, but certainly, uh, again, accused Russia the Russian military, which means Shogu and Gerasimov, of having attacked his troops, said that 30, 30 of his men had died in the attacks that preceded his decision to take on the military. Yeah, Prigozhin still has a fair amount of influence and standing, which is why I think Putin is trying to treat the situation very, very carefully. He recognizes that if he were to move against Prigozhin in Belarus or wherever Prigozhin is, it could, in fact, uh, result in some very, very untoward developments in the Wagner Group. Uh, what he doesn't want to do is to alienate a force that has proved to be, I think, an effective battlefield force of, of tens of thousands of individuals, and not just in Ukraine, but also in other countries. I think he's trying to keep in tact uh, that force as he tries to assimilate and integrate it into the Ministry of Defense, which is going to be a tough call. And that's why Putin doesn't really have a strong hand now. I'm, I'm sure he is very, very frustrated with the likes of Defense Minister Shoigu and General Gerasimov, because the war in Ukraine has gone so poorly. But he has to be very careful in terms of these next moves. I think his strategy is not to make the situation worse and to make sure that he's able to line up the support within the government, within the military, and even within the Wagner forces, uh, so that he doesn't take any precipitous move that is going to lead to further instability and could really seriously threaten his continued political and physical survival. But knowing Vladimir Putin and the way he retaliates, uh, no matter how long it takes, against those who oppose him, would you take out a life insurance policy on Prigozhin right now? No, I certainly would not. Uh, but there is a, a saying that revenge sometimes is best tasted cold. And I, I do think he's going to wait and not do anything in a, in a careless and reckless manner that could, in fact, lead to further instability. But I, I do think that Prigozhin has blotted his copybook, although in some respects, you know, he did it frontally. Uh, Putin has, has gone to great lengths to go after and try to assassinate and assassinate, uh, for example, Russian intelligence officers who have betrayed their country by working with Western intelligence services. 
Grossen made no secret of his dis, uh, displeasure with what was going on in Ukraine and uh, the military's uh, prosecution of that war. So maybe in some respects, Putin appreciates that it was done uh, frontally and openly. But uh, Prigozhin still presents, I think, a pretty serious challenge to Putin's rule and his control. And I don't think Putin is going to allow anyone, if he's able, to continue to uh, present such a challenge. And if put on your CIA hat for a moment, if you were advising the president, uh, how would you assess Vladimir Putin going on national television, interrupting their TV, and really, for the first time in 23 years that he's been in power, conveying his vulnerability, his weakness, and that he, there was insubordination in the ranks? I think it just underscores the weakness uh, of Putin right now. And I'm sure the people around Putin are continuing to try to figure out exactly which way to go. But the fact that Putin would do this, I think it just reflected his inability to control the situation and to take firm and decisive action against Prigozhin. Uh, I think he felt as though he needed to do something along those lines. But I think the coming days uh, and weeks uh, in terms of what Putin says and does publicly, what Prigozhin doesn't say publicly, will give us a sense of where this is going to go. But again, the situation is highly dynamic. I think there could be a lot of new developments that have been going, taking place. And so I don't think the threat to Putin's rule is by any means over at this point.